we know that any number can be written as a product of prime numbers. Say 256 can be written as 2 multiplied by 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. Now this method of writing a number as a product of prime factors is known as prime factorization method. Now you can find out the square root using this prime factorization method. Now what if the number is very big? Say 55696 five, or 55696. Can you resolve it into prime factors? Let's see. Six nine six. You can see it is an even number, so it is divisible by two. Again, it is divisible by two. I can see that it is still a very large number, and it will lead to many such factors like this. Well, it was easy as it was 2 into 2 into 2 into 2, but thinking of a number to be divisible by 59 is actually a difficult thing. So what to do? How to bring out the square root of a number that is very huge or prime factorization method is not so very convenient for this number? Well, we will try finding square root by long division method. This is another method which is used for larger numbers. Let's see how to do this. See, we'll find out the square root of 55696. So first of all, write it in a division method. Like this. Now the first step is that place a bar over every pair of digits starting from the ones digit. What does that mean? First of all, tell me what is the ones digit in this? It is 6. So now we have to start placing bar from this side over two numbers together. Place a bar over every pair of digits starting from this side. So let me place a bar here. Every pair. Now the second pair. Now what do I see? This number is left behind without any pair. This is a single number. So let me place a bar on this. Remember, we'll always start placing a bar from the ones digit. And it should be a pair of numbers. Well, in the starting, if one digit is left without the pair, we can place a bar over it also. Next, find the largest number whose square is less than or equal to the number under the leftmost bar. Well, we had started putting the bar from the ones digit, but now we will divide it just like we do the normal division. So we start from this number, that is the leftmost bar. Now what I have to do, I have to think of a number whose squaring will get me equal to 5 or less than 5. Can you tell me this number? Well, I can say that 1 into 1, that is 1 square, is equal to 1. The next square is 2 into 2, that is 2 square, gives me 4. And the next one, that is 3 square, gives me 9. So either I can use 9 or I can use 4, but I cannot use 9 because it will go beyond 5. I have to use a number that is equal to or less than this. Well, I can see that this goes perfectly for my divisor. So now, take this number that is 2 square, that is 4, as the divisor and the number under the leftmost bar as the dividend. So for now, this will become my dividend and this will become my divisor. Now let us uh, get the remainder using this. So what we'll do, we'll write 2 multiplied by 2 gives me 4. This is what we have to do. We have to find out the number which when squared gives us equal to or less than the number which is under the leftmost bar. So 2 twos are 4, so 5 minus 4 is 1. See, what we've done, we have subtracted 4 from 5. So we get the remainder as 1. Next, what we have to do, bring down 
the number under the next bar to the right of the remainder. Write the new dividend. So in normal division, what you do? You just bring out the next number and not a pair of numbers. But here we have placed a bar here so that you know that whenever you copy a number, you will copy it with the pair itself. So you will copy your 56. Okay? Now what do we do? Double the quotient and enter it with a blank on its right. Confused? Let me show you. Double the quotient. Which is the quotient here? This is the quotient. So doubling it, what will you get? 4. So write down 4 over here. Now, enter it with a blank on its right. So we will put a blank here. So what did we do? We doubled this number that is the quotient and put it here and we placed a blank here. Now what do I need to do? Well guess the largest possible digit to fill the blank which also becomes the new digit in the quotient. Now what does that mean? That means that the number you write here should be the same number which you will multiply with this whole number and write the next quotient here. For example, Suppose here you have written, say, A. Okay, so this becomes a number called 4A. And you have to multiply this with A again. So multiplying this gives you 4A square. Now this number has to be equal to or less than this new dividend. So let us try to guess this number. First of all, let's read the whole step. Such that when the new digit is multiplied to the new quotient, just this thing I told you here, you have to multiply this with this. The product is less than or equal to the dividend. So the product should be less than or equal to this dividend. So what can be the number here? Let us start multiplying. Well, start multiplying. Either I can put here 2 here. So 42. Now the number should be same into 2. What do I get? I get 84. Well, this is less than this, but I think I can get a better number. Let us try with 43. Now, if I use 43, that is 3 in this blank, I have to use the same quotient. So, 43 into 3. What do I get? 129. Well, that is also less than 156, but then let us check the other number also to be sure. Let us check 44 into 4. Why 44 into 4? See, this will be the digit in this blank and it has to be the same quotient there. So 44 into 176. Well, this is going beyond 156. So which will be the correct option? This one. So let us write here. 3 in this blank and 3 in the quotient. So 43 into 3 gives me 129. See. Now, what did we do? We multiplied 43 into 3, that is 129. So this is less than 156. So now let us subtract this. What do we get? 27. Now what do we do next? Bring down the pair of digits under the next bar to the right of the remainder. Well, the next pair of digits is to be brought down like this. Now, double the quotient and enter it with a blank on its right at the place of the new division. See, the thing we had done here is was that doubling 2 and writing 4 with a blank. Now, we'll do the same thing. What we'll do? We'll double the whole quotient here and write it here. So, 23, doubling that, what do we get? 23 into 2, that is 46. And we have to enter it with a blank. So we enter it with a blank. So this becomes our new divisor. Now one digit is left that we will put. <coughs> now, guess the largest possible digit to fill the blank, which also becomes the new digit in the quotient. See, again the same thing that we did here will be repeated. What were we doing? We were finding that digit, which when written here and multiplied with this number, so that same digit comes here as the quotient, we get same or less than the number written 
as dividend. So, can you guess the number? 46 added one digit here, the same digit written as quotient here. So, multiplying this divisor and the quotient, we get a number less than or equal to this. Can you find it out yourself? So, let's try. 460, let's try 5. So, 465 into 5. Let's multiply this. 5 into 5. 25. Well, this is less than this, but let us check with other number also. So the next number will be 465 into 6 or 466 into 6. Well, 466 into 6 because the last digit has to be same with this quotient. So what do we get? Well, do we need to check with any other number? No. See, I get the I get the same answer here. So let me write it. 466 into 6 gives me 2796. <coughs> See. Now we can find out the remainder. That is 0. So our sum is completed. See, we got 466 into 6 as 2796. And we have completed this division. We do not get any new dividend here. So we can say that root over 55,696 is 236. This is our square root. So this is how, how we find out the square root of a large number using long division method. <coughs> now try it out yourself. Find out the square root of this number. 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 4. Well, I can see that it has an even number of digits. So if you pair it, you will get a pair for each number. So it will be easy for you. Do this yourself. <coughs> Let's start doing. We have written it here first. First of all, what we need to do? We need to place the bar from starting from the ones digit, from that side. So the first pair is this. This is the second pair. And this is the third pair. You can see there is no single digit left here. So these are the three pairs. Now what do we need to do? We have to consider the first pair. So we start dividing it normally with the leftmost bar. That is the number under the le leftmost bar. So first of all, find the digit which when multiplied to itself, that is the square of itself, which give, will give me a number less than or equal to 23. Think of any such number. Well, I know 5 square is 25. This is larger than this and 4 square is 16. So the natural number which will go is 4 because 4 4s are 16. This gives me 7. So I am done with the first pair. Next what we need to do? We need to copy the next pair of digits to this. Remember do not copy only to copy the pair of digits. So copying this, we get 723. And next thing what we have to do? Well, we need to double the quotient and write it as the new divisor. So double the quotient. Right now the quotient here is 4. So doubling this will give me 8. And one more thing we do is we put a blank beside it. So we have to enter a new digit in this blank. See, now think of a number which when kept here and multiplied with this number, so the quotient will be the same digit that we write here, will give us a number that is equal to or less than this new dividend. Think about such number. Let's start doing. Well, 87. Let's take this. 87 into 7. You can try it out with any random numbers until you get this result, 723 or a number less than that. So this gives me what? 609. This is a number less than that. But then let's verify with 88 into 8. What do I get? Seven hundred and four. 
Well, that is still less than this. Let us clarify with another number. 89 into 9. Well, why am I changing this? You remember? Because this digit has to be same with this digit. So what do I get? 801. But well, this exceeds 723. So we'll take this result. So 88 into 8 gives me 704. And we get the remainder 19. So what did we do? We found out that 88 multiplied with 8, this and this digit needs to be the same, gives us 704. And we found out the remainder as 19. Next, what do we do? We repeat the same process with this bar itself. So we copy down. 24 here. So the new dividend is 24. One more step what we do? We have to double the quotient. So double this quotient and write it here. So 48 when doubled gives us 96. And what do we do? We give a blank after it. So this is what we get. Now again the procedure of this getting 8 shall be repeated here. You have to find out a digit when, which when written here as well as multiplied with this whole number and written here gives us less than or equal to this new dividend. So what will be the digit? Let's try 961 into 1. This and this digit needs to be the same. 961. Well, I think I can get a bigger number here. So 962. What does it give me? This and this digit is same. See, I got the exact number. So I do not need to check other numbers. So I'll write 962 into 2 gives me 1924. So here I am not left with any new dividend. So I can say that the square root of 232324 or 2,32,324 is this 482. This is the square root of this number. So now you know how to find out the square root of a large number using the long division method.